Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I have a part one I guess of a new series that I'm going to start here on the channel. So I have had a lot of questions um, by both beginner and more advanced sewists alike about fabric. Um, just more you know what fabrics are appropriate for what projects, how do I pick fabric to go with the patterns that I want to make, just a ton of, I get a ton of questions about fabric all the time. So I had mentioned a while ago that maybe I would do a little series where um, just every so often I pick a fabric and we talk about it, you know, um, different properties where you can buy it, uh, patterns and stuff that you could use with it, maybe some more beginner friendly patterns versus some more advanced patterns that you could use for that. Um, and just kind of go, I, I was kind of thinking maybe once a month from now through the end of the year, um, if there's enough to talk about through that much, but definitely just kind of go and kind of have a theme each month. So in going through May, um, I was thinking I've been sewing a ton with linen and I've had a lot of questions about linen. So I thought for this fabric series, learning fabric with Whitney, we should call this learning fabric with Whitney linen. That's what I'm going to call this little series. And um, I was thinking, yeah, a video a month. I apologize also for the uh, background noise. Um, you know, we're still in quarantine and the kids are getting close to the end of the school year and they are doing a scavenger hunt actually for school today, uh, virtually. So <laughs> you can hear them running through the house. I apologize for that. Um, but I thought I would start with linen and just kind of have a theme for the month because I, you know, you tend to use different fabrics in different months. So for instance, in July, I'm not going to cover wool because I'm not sewing with wool in July. Um, but I thought for May I would definitely cover linen because I have def well in April I made a ton of things in linen. And I'll actually leave a link to that video um, that's giving you maybe a good idea of some uh, patterns that you can use uh, with linen. Um, and I'm also sewing with a lot of linen in May as well, so um, stay tuned on that one. <laughs> Not to the end of the month yet, so I haven't made everything. Um, but anyway, the idea is that kind of talk about the fiber a little bit. Um, we'll talk about things to look for when ordering it online, especially in this day and age where so much stuff has to be online, um, just with the pandemic and all of that. Um, but just even in general, uh, there's just a lot of people that don't have access to fabric stores near them. Um, it's definitely a wonderful fiber to buy when you're in the stores. It's pretty easy to pick up on. Um, but anyway, we're going to talk about linen today. So to start things off, I want to talk about a resource and as always leave any questions you have down below I am more than happy to answer them um, this book this is Claire Schaefer's fabric sewing guide if you can find this book there's a whole bunch of editions of it I have no idea which edition this one is I bought this one used um, it just says updated edition but I think there's quite a few different edi there's a newer uh, edition of this book maybe even a couple um, newer ones but uh, this book is phenomenal so if you are a um, and I'll leave a link down to it below so I mean search some of the used book sites I'm, I'm sure it's probably available on Amazon um, I'm not sure how much sometimes these books get ridiculous ridiculously expensive if they're no longer in print and I'm not sure if this one still is in print or not um, but I'll leave a link down to it below so at least you can be on the lookout for it but this literally I mean it's huge and it lists every single kind of fabric that you can think of um, it talks about um, all the characteristics um, how to sew with various fabrics um, it talks a lot about burn tests you know I did the video on burn testing it talks a lot about that in this book uh, but if you have any questions about fabrics, they're probably answered in this book. It's a really good resource. So if you're looking for a good resource book to have in your library, this is a good one. So I want to just kind of, <laughs> I have recommended this book um, fairly early on in my sewing, and or my garment sewing at least, and I'm very glad that I have that in my library. It's a fantastic resource. So I will leave a link down to that below. So linen. Linen is one, uh, if not the oldest um, cellulose fabric uh, in history, really. Um, obviously, you know, man was using um, animal skins and that kind of thing for clothing. Um, but linen is, they're finding, probably the oldest um, fiber that was used that was taken from something cellulose, which is the flax plant in linen's case, and turned into an actual textile. So um, there's different categories, I guess, of your different fibers. Now fiber is what a fabric's made out of. Fiber would be like linen, silk, wool, polyester, um, rayon, 
those are all the fiber and then you get into the weave of a fabric which would be like your charmeuse your satins your twills that's how a different fabric's woven so you can have many different fibers that are made into those types of um, weaves that you know so there's there's two different things you're looking at when you're looking at fabric um, so anyway linen is a cellulose fabric meaning it's plant-based so uh, linen cotton uh, hemp there's a lot of stuff that's made with hemp now um, bamboo rayon rayon is actually made from uh, wood pulp um, and a lot you know your rayons even your bamboos viscose all of those um, are made from natural natural resources but they do go through a man-made process they are processed to get to uh, where they need to be so they're maybe not as natural as like a cotton or a linen which is stuff that's literally just spun because they have to go through a bit of a process but um, in the case of bamboo it's a very sustainable one because bamboo uh, regenerates very quickly anyway <laughs> we could go i could go a whole science class on this so uh, linen is a natural fiber and it is um, phenomenal for many different things, but there are definitely pros and cons as with most fabric fibers, uh, pros and cons of the different, um, of the, the plant or of the actual fiber. Linen is fantastic for keeping you cool in the summer. It dries quickly. <laughs> it, um, uh, it aerates, it keeps your body temperature regulated. Um, which is, is similar in most natural fibers. They will kind of help insulate when you need to be insulated and help keep you cool when you need to be kept cool. That is definitely the case with linen. It does, I'm sure you know, crease. It will hold, um, so it presses well. <laughs> but um, it does not, um, it will crease very easily. However, I've had a lot of questions about linen and if I'm just constantly ironing and nope, I'm not. <laughs> I've actually got one of my new linen tops on today. This is the uh, Fern Top by uh, Pattern Scout. I love it. Um, if you watch the daily vlogs, I made it in there. But what I do is um, I pre-wash my linen in that I put it into a washing machine in a cold wash and I wash it and then I put it into the dryer and dry it um, with all of my yardage. Uh, linen, and we'll show you some examples here, but linen usually comes with a um, kind of a protective layer over it when you buy it off the bolt, and it makes it much slicker and stiffer than when it gets washed. So um, linen also shrinks, so you definitely want to pre-treat your fabric before you sew it up because you don't want any surprises later on down the road. Now, the reason I put it in the dryer when I first get my yardage, number one, um, I think it softens it really nicely, but number two, I want to get as much shrink out of it as possible so that when I do make my garment, I don't have any surprises later on. You know, if, for instance, someone else in my family is doing the laundry and it gets put in the dryer, it's not a disaster. Um, now, when I wash, so once I've made my garment, I will wash it in the washing machine on the delicate hand wash cycle, and then I let it air dry. Um, I'll usually hang it up to dry. Um, linen is just as strong wet as it is when it's dry. Um, there are some fibers that are not that way, but linen is. It is a very uh, strong, durable fabric. Um, so you can hang it up to dry just on a hanger, any shirts, dresses, or whatever. I'll put on a hanger to let them air dry. Now, if I have any creases or if it's a little more rumpled than I want, I will a lot of times then throw those items into the dryer with a damp washcloth just to release all those creases. Let it run in a dryer for, I don't know, just a couple of minutes, and they usually come out perfect. <laughs> so I very, very rarely iron my linen. The only exception is I've noticed... Um, if I have like a pair of shorts, for instance, that have a, um, a deep hem or a cuff, sometimes those just get creased really easy when they've been washed. Um, sometimes, a lot of times I throw my shorts and pants in the dryer and just let those go. So those can get creased just from being with other stuff. And I will sometimes hit those with the iron just to get the hems nice and pressed. Um, but for some reason, it, that's the only, and maybe it's because I use a heavier weight linen on my bottom weights. Um, but yeah, that's the only time I ever really hit my linen with an iron, and it's very seldom. So um, I find it to be very easy to take care of. Okay, let's talk about different types of weights of linen and how to shop. So linen is one of those things that gets softer with wear, softer with every wash. It's like a, cot like a denim in that sense. So the more times you wash your linen, the softer it gets. Um, and just the more lived in and beautiful and everything. Um, linen also takes dye extremely well. So if you're into dyeing, it's something that's very fun to do. Actually, I had a couple of lighter, uh, 
linens that I had shown in one of my videos um, that aren't really my colors. They're a little too pastel. And someone's like, well, why don't you just dye it to be your color of green? And I was like, of course, <laughs> of course, the linen dyes so easily. Yes, that is an excellent idea. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I have a pale yellow and a pale green that are going to get dyed here at some point into um, darker yellow and a darker green um, that are more in my uh, color palette. But yeah, sometimes the the most simple solutions just whew. but anyway so it does take dye very well as do a lot of the natural fibers um, you do need to make sure that you're using a dye for um, your um, um, not your protein fibers protein fibers are gonna be like wool silk things that come from an animal these are your plant-based fibers is what I was trying to say <laughs> so like your cottons your uh, linens hemp so that kind of thing uh, anyway, because a lot of times you need two different types. There are two different types of dye that take best for those um, different um, bases. Okay, so linen. It presses, I mean, it, it washes well. It's just a delight to wear. It's nice and cool. It comes many different um, ways. So most of the time, I'm opening up my computer here because I have some um, sources that I'm going to link down in the description box below. Most of the time, it just comes your standard woven linen, you know, like what I'm wearing, but it'll come in different weights. So we're just gonna, we're gonna stop talk about that first because that's typically what you think of when you think of a linen, just a, a woven linen. Now, you can have things that are a little bit looser woven, um, which means you can, even if it's a little coarser, you can kind of see through it a little bit if you hold it up, meaning you can almost see the little holes in the weave. Um, or you can have things that are very tightly woven, which this that I'm wearing here is a tightly woven linen. Um, a lot of times just by having a cut edge, you can definitely see things that are loosely woven fray like crazy and like immediately um, without even, you know, forget the wash. <laughs> like they just fray when you look at it. Um, but for the most part, yeah, they'll fray in the washing machine. Use a serger, use your typical um, French seams. Um, you definitely need to finish off your seams. I mean, you should always finish off your seams, but definitely with linen. So I have a couple of sources here. Um, uh, and I think, let's see, two of these are U.S. stores. One's a New Zealand store and one is a Canadian store. So um, you guys have heard me talk ad nauseum about the Fabric Store, which is a store in New Zealand. They have a gorgeous range as their premium range of linen. They have a um, kind of a, just a mid-weight linen and then a heavyweight linen in that they have a lot of colors in the mid-weight linen and then they have a few of those same colors in their heavyweight linen. So I've got um, one here. Hold on. And actually, I also wanted to show you with this one, the difference between pre-washed and post-wash. Try not to dump my computer at the same time. Okay, so the other thing to look at with linen, a lot of times they'll have the weight of the linen listed. Now, anything that uses the metric, basically anywhere other than the US that uses the metric system, will do uh, gram GSM, which is grams uh, per square meter. Um, and they'll have a weight that'll usually be like, um, you know, like 150, 275, 250, something in that range uh, for most linens and that kind of thing. And then you have your U.S. stores that'll list it by ounce. So it'll be like, you know, three and a half ounces per square yard. Um, so you do, there are converters though online if you really want to look and kind of compare your linens. So I'm actually, um, I'll talk a little bit about both <laughs> types of measurement just so it makes it a little easier. So this is the premium um, color range from the Fabric Store New Zealand. This is their brick colorway. So this is their kind of mid-weight linen. It is 150 to 160 grams per square meter, which comes to about four and a half um, yards per square meter. Or sorry, yeah, four and a half ounces per square yard. <laughs> That's what I meant. It's <laughs> getting confusing. So anyway, this is how it comes. When you first buy it, it kind of has a sheen. You can almost kind of see a sheen that's on there. Um, this is right off the bolt. This is the same fabric, same color that's been washed. Now I haven't done anything else. It's been washed and actually ironed because I um, have cut a little bit out of this. Yeah, my, I have a dress in this. But you can see just the difference, how this just looks a little, it's less shiny. Um, they're both soft, they're both very, very soft. But this just has, um, 
it, you can just feel that that coating has been washed off, which then allows you to have the nice rumpled effect, which I think anyone that's going to embrace linen, you just have to embrace the, the rumple. Otherwise, you're going to drive yourself nuts because the minute you sit down in linen, it creases. So, <laughs> and it just, just enjoy that. I mean, it's just that nice washed, natural linen rumple. I mean, it just evokes beach scenes in my head and summer and um, cool, crisp, um, relaxed. I just, I love, I love linen. That's kind of what linen evokes in my head. <laughs> but I just wanted to show you the difference in freshly uh, bought versus um, been washed. And that's the same color. So hopefully that is a good, that comes across on the camera. So that is their regular weight. Now they also have a heavy weight and their heavy weight is about 275 grams per square meter, which comes out to about eight ounces per um, yard, <laughs> per square yard. So that, you know, gives you, so now we're at, you know, four and a half up to eight ounces. Um, I'm going to kind of talk more probably in ounces just because I, Imperial is what I work in because I'm an American. It's the only people that do Imperial, but anyway. <laughs> Um, so that kind of gives you a difference in heavy. So the higher the number, both if you're working in grams per square meters or in ounces per square yard, the higher the number, the heavier weight the fabric. So that's the first one. So fabric store, um, I also want to note that their prices on their website are listed in the New, New Zealand dollar. So if you're in the U.S., for instance, it is much cheaper U.S. dollar than it is New Zealand dollar. So if that makes sense. Like I think their premium... Let's see, their premium fabric is like $26 per meter, um, but in US dollars that gets down to like 16, I think. And they also have sales quite frequently, so definitely watch out for the sales. That's usually when I buy up a whole bunch, <laughs> when they have their biannual sale, um, the switching of the seasons usually. And they just finished having a good linen sale. All right, the next shop I wanted to talk about is Fabrics dash store.com and um, this is a US company they specialize in linen and I was recently um, introduced to this company uh, they have primarily I mean linen is pretty much all they work in but they have uh, three different weights ish that they kind of work in I have ordered um, some of their they have remnants and I ordered some remnants and they're lightweight this is in the apricot colorway it's been washed and also their heavyweight <clears throat> but they also have a medium weight so their, just comparison wise, their lightweight is about three and a half um, ounces per square yard versus the uh, fabric store, theirs is about four and a half. So this is lighter weight than the fabric store. Their medium weight is usually about five um, ounces per square yard. Um, and then this runs about seven ounces per square yard. So in comparison, their heavy weight is not as heavy as the New Zealand store's heavyweight. And then the New Zealand store's regular weight falls in between their light and medium weight. <laughs> if that makes sense, I hope it does. So um, heavyweight. Heavyweight, um, anything around that um, seven to eight, maybe even like six and a half, I would say is a perfect candidate for anything structured. So, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about patterns, but pants, um, jackets, uh, fitted dresses, um, and I mean pants more like, yeah, not necessarily tailored, but things that are a little bit more fitted, where you want a little bit beefier fabric, so it's not showing up right lump and bump, and so your seams will hold up nicely. Now, if you're doing a pair of loose uh, palazzo pants, you can definitely go with a lighter weight linen, that's fine. Um, but things that are a little bit, need to be a little bit more structured. So anything that calls for bottom weight fabric, twills, um denim, cotton, any of that is perfect for the heavyweight linen. Now, one of the things about linen, I said that it shrunk when you uh, dry it. Linen also uh, does not have very good elasticity naturally, which means it can grow during the day, basically. So it can bag out easily and uh, waistbands can grow. So definitely you want to make sure you have those, inter um, those waistbands interfaced really well with a good interfacing. Um, but just know your knees are going to bag out in linen pants and you just kind of need to be comfortable with that. Um, so maybe don't do like a, a you know, a tight fitting jean, for instance, even if, I mean, obviously you would have to have a pattern that um, calls for no stretch, but because um, very few bottom weight linens come with lycra in them. 
So uh, just know that your knees and stuff will bag out, the butt will get a little bagged out. So just pick your patterns accordingly. Maybe pick ones that, you know, could be a tailored trouser, but maybe something that's just a little looser um, in the butt and knee so that you don't have that issue. Um, that is something to consider. But yes, your heavyweights could be your blazers, your jackets, um, a sheath dress, anything that's fitted. Then when you get into your medium weight knits, or mitt knits, your medium weight linens, so this is kind of like your premium, the regular range at um, the New Zealand store, or even I would say the middle range, uh, the mid-weight range at Fabrics Dash Store. <laughs> you can look more at um, skirts, um, although I've made skirts in the heavier weight too, it just kind of depends on the look you want. But you've got wrap dresses, I've made wrap dresses, um, sheath dresses, you know, more structured, you could do uh, a little bit more structured tops, like button downs or button ups. Um, you know, the, the that kind of weight. So anything that calls for cottons, such as uh, cotton lawns, if something calls for a cotton lawn, you could definitely uh, use a mid-weight linen there. And I would say that this would fall in between four and six ounces. I would consider like a mid-weight linen. Um, so what else? Yeah, little flirty skirts. Like I said, wider legged pants. If you're making like a wide leg palazzo type pant, you could definitely use a mid-weight linen for that. I've done that. It works great. Um, pajamas. If you wanted to do pajamas, a mid-weight linen is fabulous for something like that. You know, like a, your tailored pajama um, is fantastic. Um, more looser fitting jackets are great in a mid-weight linen. So maybe not a blazer, but maybe more of like a... Um, uh, like a robe style jacket or um, almost like a, a coat again or that kind of thing, you know, uh, you know, like a kimono style like jacket or whatever. I hesitate to use the word kimono because it's not, I, I don't want to culturally appropriate there. But anyway, you know what I mean. Robed style dusters, that kind of thing. All great in your midweight linen. Then you've got your lightweight linen. This I would classify, fly, classify as lightweight linen. So I would say anything below four ounces, um, or like 110, I think, grams per square meter would be lightweight linen. Now, I'm not sure what this is that I'm wearing. I bought this at a sh um, shop in Indiana back in February. This is the offcuts of this that I'm wearing. Uh, you can see through it. So when you hold it up to your, your light, you can see your hand through it. Um, you know, it's definitely lightweight. I would say that this is very, the, this, uh, this is very comparable to the lightweightness of this. Um, which is the lighter weight from fabricsstore.com, um, fabrics-store.com. <laughs> but I would say with your lightweight linens, you need to stick put mostly with tops. Um, and just kind of see, you know, a lot of them lose their um, transparentness when they're up against the skin, like they're not nearly as uh, transparent as they are when you hold them up to the light. So any kind of tops, like the, you know, the top I'm wearing here, I'm getting ready to make the Love Notions Rhapsody out of uh, this lightweight linen. Um, so basically, Anything that calls for um, your lighter weight fabrics. Again, your cotton lawns. You could use a lighter weight, maybe not on a dress, because cotton lawns are just a little bit tighter weaves, so you can't see through them a lot of times quite as easily. I mean, obviously, it differs with pattern with uh, different fabrics, but for the most time, cotton lawns are a little um, denser. So um, definitely take that into consideration. You may need a lining if you make use it, make a dress out of this, but definitely any of your tops. Um, especially looser tops like the Rhapsody, um, anything that calls for uh, like a cotton lawn or um, even drape your fabrics if it calls for a chalet or um, what else? <laughs> uh, any kind of rayon, a crepe, any of that stuff, you can still use the lighter weight linen. Now it does, linen is not drapey. I would not call linen drapey, but your lighter weight linens definitely have more drape than their mid-weight and definitely heavyweight counterparts. So when you hold up a little bit of linen, you know, it stands out. If I were to do this to um, some rayon chalet, it would be like whoosh. <laughs> so there's definitely more body in your linen fabric, but that can be a really cool element. So just keep that in mind. It's very, I would use it almost interchangeably with like a cotton and know that it's gonna hang even the thinner weight, like a cotton lawn, for instance, just has a crisper hand. It may have more drape than like a cotton twill, but um, it doesn't have as much drape as say a rayon batiste that it just has a lot of drape. Um, so just keep that in mind that your linens are just a little bit more crisp, but sometimes that can be really cool, especially with all the really um, cool sleeves that are out right now. 
the lightweight linen just holds those shapes really well and just really makes a good wow factor, I think. Um, linen presses really well. I think it's an easy beginner fabric because it holds its press, it's easy to cut, um, it's, uh, it's not slippery, so it holds together when you're sewing. Um, it takes, you know, you can press your hems up really easily. I think it's a very, very easy fabric to work with, very similar to like a cotton. So if you are a beginner seamstress and you want to branch out for away from cotton, definitely give linen a try. It is a fantastic next step up and you're going to love wearing it. <laughs> All right. Other two I wanted to touch on. Uh, Style Maker Fabrics right now has some, well, they have a few different linens that are um, some of the digital print linens that get kind of pricey, um, but they do have a line of washed linen shirting in a, quite a few different colors. And it is a, let me look and see its weight. Yeah, they have it in five different colors right now. It's a 4.4 ounce, so um, probably on the lighter end of a mid-weight linen is what I would call it. Um, but this would be great for like a wrap dress or um, a shift dress, you know, a real loose shift dress like the Cielo. Um, but yeah, I think that that, yeah, I noticed that they had been um, advertising that. And this fourth shop I wanted to talk about is Blackbird Fabrics. Blackbird Fabrics just got in some 6.5 ounce linen in a whole bunch of, like a whole bunch of colors which is beautiful. So I would put this in from going from mid-weight to a heavier weight. So it'd be a great for different um, like shirt dresses. It would be probably wonderful for that. Skirts, um, maybe a little bit looser pants, like maybe the Pietra pants, but the wide leg one. Um, maybe the, maybe the taper would be fine. You could definitely play around with that, kind of see um, how it feels. Uh, and they also have some of the wash linen, which is a little bit lighter weight. I think probably very similar to the same as Style Maker. So those are definitely some very good options to check no matter where you are in the world. Okay, last thing. Let's see. What else can I tell you about linen? Um, somewhere here. I have... Oh, on oh my dog. Okay, <laughs> just like with a lot of other fibers, linen also comes as a knit. Now, I have a piece right here of linen knit. Linen knit tends, it's gorgeous. It wicks, it's beautiful. Um, I think this has a little bit of uh, spandex in it, but the thing with linen, because linen itself has like zero elasticity, uh, linen knit does not have good recovery, which means when I stretch it, see, it kind of bags out. It does not have great recovery. Obviously, the higher of the lycra content you've got in there, the better the recovery, but um, it is, yeah. It just kind of bags out. So keeping that in mind, linen knit is gorgeous and beautiful to work with. It is um, dry, so it's kind of sticky like a cotton um, knit, like a cotton jersey would be. But just remember, use uh, looser silhouettes for this. So instead of doing a really tight fitting, like the wanted tee, I would never make a wanted tee out of linen knit. It would bag out, the, it would gape, it would just not be good. Um, even if it did have a fair amount of lycra in it, I would not use linen knit for a wanted tee. They're way too fitted. Now, if you wanted to use it for a, um, like a Mandy boat neck tee, for instance, which is the Tasuti, um, which is a very loose, uh, pattern and it's got kind of a tighter arm, perfect for something like that. So you like your looser t-shirts, um, a looser dress, just things that aren't form fitting. Um, you know, nice wide necklines so you don't have to worry about, um, necklines having to stretch over the head. That way they're not getting bagged out or stretched out. So just keep that in mind. It is a gorgeous fabric to work with, but use it with um, looser uh, silhouettes. It's kind of my, my uh, advice on that one. All right, patterns. <laughs> I've had a lot of questions on that. Pretty much the entire Rome collection from Closet Case Patterns, which is their uh, Cielo dress and top, their Pietra pants, and their Fior skirt all perfect for linen <laughs> and really all perfect for like a mid-weight linen. Now you could definitely go heavier weight in the pants, the Pietra pants. Um, and I think I'm actually going to, I think that that's what this heavier weight green linen right here is going to become a pair of their wide leg, um, Pietras. But, uh, the other ones I would definitely say, um, mid-weight. Now the Cielo top, you can definitely get away if you're just doing the top, um, in the lighter weight linens. I made one that was pretty transparent and I made it the back with the transparent and then did um, a lighter weight linen on the front, kind of a handkerchief linen. Um, so like a, a light to mid weight um, 
one for the front. So very easy to play around with um, and just, you know, come up with all sorts of different um, creative things that you can do with linen. It's just a gorgeous fiber to wear in the warmer months. Um, it washes just beautifully. And if you've ever slept on linen sheets, they're heavenly. <laughs> My mom has a pair on the guest bed in their house and they are just, they are very expensive, but man, oh man, are they lovely. In fact, I've even thought about, um, I think the fabrics, uh, Sorry, my camera cut off. The Fabrics Dash Store, um, I think they sell some of their linens in wide widths so you, for sheets. Um, so you could potentially make your own linen sheets. Um, I don't know that I'm there yet, but <laughs> they, are, they are very nice and they wash super soft. Um, so that's the other thing. Linen can be very scratchy if you're not careful. If you get a nice, um, softened. So the Fabrics Dash Store.com, some of their linen is, says it's softened, that's, great. That feels nice against the skin. It's not nearly as coarse as like the natural stuff. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. Anything that's been softened, uh, the fabric store, the New Zealand store, all of their linens are very soft. Um, I highly recommend those. And I'm sure all these washed linens from Style Maker and Blackbird are probably also very soft. Um, so yeah, just know that they, um, they do soften with wear and with washings. Okay. Um, what else? Any, there's beginner, any woven beginner pattern would be great in linen, to be honest. Anything that uses quilting cotton or that uses any kind of cottons, you can substitute for linens. So if you are just starting out in garment sewing, um, any of the woven t-shirt patterns you see out there, um, there's a lot of great beginner patterns. Linen can be used for those. It's just a really, I think, a great stepping stone fabric. So if you've gotten used to your cottons um, and you're ready to kind of branch out, linen is a fantastic step for that. Um, yeah, just make sure you pre-wash it before you uh, do anything out of it. So I think that's all I've got for today. I think that's everything I kind of wanted to cover with linen. Um, I hope that helps. I will leave links down to the fabric stores down below and to some of the patterns that I've mentioned also down below if you'd like to take a look, um, as well as maybe some others that I think of while I'm putting together just the description box links. <laughs> so definitely check those out. They're just right below the video here. So I hope that that's helpful and informative and that that answered some questions. But again, if you've got any others, leave them down below and I will uh, get to those. Okay, um, yeah, that's all I've got for today. On Friday, we've got a Sew the Look, um, one of my spring uh, street style looks that I had pinned in for that video back in March, I think. Is that when my spring one went up? <laughs> that all runs together now. But I am recreating some of those, so I've got one up to show you on Friday. Uh, and then Saturday is the return to the Kimberly Sew Along. I had some snafus with filming. <laughs> Well, when do I not have snafus with filming? I forgot to mention that um, if you widen the skirt, which I did because I had done a full bust adjustment and then widen the skirt, you also need the widen. There's a bottom band that goes around the skirt and you need to widen that. And then also I was going to show you how to draft the scoop neck on the dress and my, I had a phone call. I was recording on my phone and it cut off. So um, I will be showing you talking about the band and also showing you how to do um, draft a very simple scoop neck on um, that dress because it is a v-neck. So that will be on Sunday. Okay, I think that's all I've got for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. If you're watching the daily vlogs, I will see you tomorrow. Otherwise, I will see you on Friday. Hope you have a good one. Bye.